Ryan, and this is 12 Rigs of Christmas. Well, I think I need another ride, and guess what? The people have asked, they said they want more full sizes, so guess what? More full sizes it is. Ron Burns! Yeah, woo! Santa needs a ride in this bad boy. It is. She sounds American. Yeah. You think you can get me a ride uh, yeah. down to WFO? Let's go. Well, uh, I've been trying to get over there for a long time and this is the perfect truck to get me a ride the rest of the way. So let me hop in. Sounds good. Presents might be sliding around by now. Oh, that's all right, you know. Man, always feels great to get into a full size. Whoa, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Did we hit anything too hard? I don't think so. I mean, if Dude, we did, I thought we were slamming up. those things. Oh, we got one of them pretty good. Damn. Dude, rocks are dangerous. Yeah. We we hit that one in the front pretty good, but it seemed to take it. What? Is there any bumps on this thing? Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> Let's pull up next to this tree and show the world what Brian has done to the to his uh, 2500 HD. Sounds good. All right, I'm hopping out of this thing. So you've been coming by the shop, Brian. You worked for us. How many year, years ago did you work for WFO? I left six years ago. You left six years ago. It was like it was yesterday. Yeah. So you were the man when it came to old school. First gen Chevy, second gen Chevy, now all these new body style trucks. So uh, this is another one of your concoctions, right? Yeah. Piece so together. Uh, this is definitely not the, the exact way how WFO would uh, lead somebody into building this truck, but you do it the Brian way every time. And this is what I want to see out of more people is that somebody tells you how they think they should do it. and you kind of make it your own, right? Yeah. Um, so first off, tell us about this truck. What year is this truck? So it's a 06 Silverado 2500 HD. Silverado? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 2500 HD, standard and, cab. And the first thing that we notice on this is it's a short bed, right? Yep. So they never GM never made a short bed 2500 HD. Uh, so I was just trying to make the truck that Chevy should have made, you know? And uh, you, you mentioned that this came from how many different vehicles? 13. 13 different vehicles. Yeah. So Brian, you are uh, my hero when it comes to Facebook Marketplace and doing it on a budget. Yeah. And we'd like to see people at home uh, taking their time and building you know, their dream trucks. And you're that guy, right? Try to. So this thing may look like a full, uh, just kind of standard half ton short bed, you know, with a little lift kit on it, but Wait till you guys see what's underneath this thing. There's some things that will blow your mind. So uh, first off, like you said, 2500 HD chassis, right? Yep. How did you make it a short bed? Lopped uh, two and a half feet off the back of it. So this section of the frame is still the same? Yep, uh, so I cut everything off the back of it. So that way the front bed mounts and everything was correct. It was a utility bed truck, so I lopped it all off. And uh, I got a Rex short bed for the tank. That happened the to be white. Yep, you picked a good color white because you can get a lot of parts, All right? my vehicles are white, apparently. So yeah. the front body mounts bolted right up, and yep. then you had to build the rear body mounts. Yep, and so... But tell us what you did with these leaf springs here, because so, here, I'm just going to lay underneath this thing because there's some crazy stuff happening. So, so obviously, it's your spring hangers for the 63s. So you but, got some WFO spring hangers, and they're actually sunk into yeah, the frame. Yeah, I wanted it a little bit lower, so... Uh, you know, Chevy's this body style, the leaf springs were outside the frame, outboard. And so I wanted to put them underneath the frame and uh, sink them in so there. So I'm, I'm putting my hands right here, along the bottom of the frame. Nothing is hanging down. Yeah. So this leaf spring is directly under the frame where normally they're outboarded, but it's sunk up so far in there that it's a perfect reveal. And then as I'm sitting here, 
there's your front control arms, and the front control arms are flush with the bottom of the frame as well. And I'm seeing that you completely notch the frame about 12 inches of the frame here to fit the lower control arms. Yeah, so that full stuff clear. Before we go up there, let's just keep talking about the back. So yeah. what fuel tanks in here? Stock short bed tank. So Both stock short bed tank yeah. from a gas truck. Yeah, so, so I moved the fuel tank cross member up like 18 inches to the stock length for the short bed. Okay. So the stock short bed tank bolted in after that. And then I'm looking, there's a 14 bolt underneath there. Yep, factory disc brake 14 from the 2500 HD. Um, and what gear ratio? Four tens with the uh, Grizzly on this one. Okay. And then here's another thing I'm looking at. So this is where you ended the frame, capped it off. Yeah. But I can see, and this is a good view right here. So from right here, I can see that your frame tapers and it's like almost two by four in the back here, Brian. Yeah. So what'd you do there? So I cut, I don't know, four inches off the bottom of the frame and then played it all with three sixteenths. Like right here, yep. you basically cut this triangle exactly, piece yeah, to out. Get, to get the leaves in there, they use your bushing and shackle kit and- uh, Through the frame. Yeah, so I just plasma cut through the frame. So it's a four inch in. shackle, Chevy 63s. This is our WFO sleeve here, three eight shackles, nine sixteenths bolts. Um, but tell me about the leaf spring pack. So I'm looking at this pack so, These three bottom springs don't look stock. No, so stock 63s with a Deaver Adipax with your U-bolts and plates. So that's a two inch Deaver Adipax, yep. right? And then you took the overload out, correct? Correct, yeah. And then the WFO U-bolt uh, flip kit there. Yep. And then I see you made some shock mounts here that are completely flush. Yeah, Nothing it, hangs down below the axle. I want it to look clean. So one of the things that I noticed too is if you look right here, I mean, you even ran the e-brake cable on top of the axle tube from the factory. They're hanging down yep. here. I, I was trying to fix everything that GM did wrong. Nothing hanging down. I'm looking right here, three inch exhaust, mandrel bent all the way to the back. And uh, I'm not seeing any mufflers. Nope, I don't believe in them. So you just got the two factory cats. So the thing totally passed the smog, yep, right? Yeah, smog. Yep. Um, all the factory EVAP stuff, everything, just no muffler. And then the beauty of basically high lining the rear of your frame the stock frame would hang down here then you got the shackle hanging down so your departure angle yeah i mean you have damn near 90 degree departure angle on this thing i noticed you got no rear bumper yet you want to add one right yeah one day always a working proce process yeah. um but this is just clean i mean the end of the shackles the the tailgate the back of the truck just looks good. Looks pre-runner-ish, yeah. but rock crawler-ish. Yeah, I know? wanted a, a pre-runner type build with a solid axle. So tell us about the interior of this truck, because this is where it really gets fun. So factory seats out of a higher option truck, obviously. Six B manual out of a so Duramax. This, this thing was a work truck, so it had the, the vinyl floors. Yeah, I like all my trucks that way. So when you're getting muddy, it doesn't matter. And when you bought this truck, it was an automatic, right? Yeah, two-wheel drive automatic. Two-wheel drive automatic. So. Yeah. What did you do here? I mean, I see all the clutch, the sticks. Where'd you get all this stuff? How'd so you do I it? I bought a wrecked truck, a V6 five speed that was wrecked. That I got the steering column, the pedal assembly, the clutch and the brake, um, and then the shift boot. And then I bought a, um, a ZF6 out of a Duramax and then a uh, twin stick. So this boot. is a six speed manual, not yeah. a five speed. So I you know. stepped it up even another level, right? Yeah, GM did a 6.0 with the NV4500, which is great. Yeah, but... there was a factory three quarter ton yeah. NV4500, but you had to one up everybody. Yeah, right? I wanted the six speed, so it matched my other trucks. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then this is probably the original headliner. That's the only thing yeah. that looks a little... I want to do an American flag up there. That's okay. my long-term plan. So. Yep, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it is comfortable to ride in this thing. And even, you know, still hand crank windows, right? Yeah. That way when we're sitting here talking, you can roll in the window and listen to your tunes, you know? Keeping it simple, right? So yeah. the interior is basically bone stock, yeah. right? And it's got a kicker 10 behind the seat with the 400 watt amp, stuff like that. You gotta have, have some music. speakers in the doors in the back. And the Chevy cab is pretty comfortable. I was just sitting in here, you know, big old Santa Claus. Yeah. No problem, right? Yeah. So, ooh, easy. Well, pop the hood. Let's look under the hood. Nothing fancy underneath here, right? Nothing. Besides a six liter in a short bed, small truck, right? Yeah, with the stick shift, it's pretty rowdy. So LQ4 six liter, yep. uh, factory tune. Um, you did replace uh, the mechanical fan and go to electric fans, right? Yep. You know Santa doesn't like that. I know. I know you told me numerous times that you like mechanical fans. But so. you did do something that I do enjoy in the fact that this is out of a, this is a factory dual electric fan. Yeah, setup, out of 06 right? Tahoe, yeah. Yeah, so 06 Tahoe, and then 
instead of just rigging it up and putting it on a switch. It's all done through the ECU. Yep, so the ECU turns it on and off. And, yep. and so it'll come on with the AC, uh, exactly. one fan will come on when it starts to get a little warm. So yep. that's super clean, you know. And then I see you have a, a strut tower between the two shock towers. Yep. And there are no inner fender wells on this thing. Nope. And I see there's already some stuff is kind of relocated for clearance, right? Yeah. So is, is this in the factory spot? Uh, no, you tell me the bungee. So I need yeah, to build bungee. a <laughs> yeah. long-term plan. I'm going to build an aluminum reservoir for the uh, coolant overflow. Yeah. Or um, if I can get a radiator that has the cap built into it. Yeah, I'll be clear gotcha. Like. So leading into what's underneath the front here. Um, so this thing is... I don't know if this no. latched. You never want Santa Claus to latch your hood oh. because it could come up. There you go. So this truck, you know, as you look from the side, sitting pretty low to the ground, right? Yeah, kind of. And then look in the wheel well there. What length shock is in that? Uh, they are 12s. They're so I would call this sitting at the height of our three inch solid axle kit, right? Yeah. Our three inch solid axle kit, axle kit takes an eight inch coilover you know, fitting everything when it's in the regular spot. Yeah. You kind of broke the mold on this one, right, Brian? Yeah, that's why um, I had to build my own hoops uh, in order to get it up there. But I used your frame plates, obviously, your track bar bracket and stuff like that. So, so I see inch and three quarter shock hoops, a bunch of gussets. Uh, you got the computer mounted off of there. Yeah. Um, and you have a 12 inch Fox 2.5 coil over in there, right? Yep. And it looks like you're sitting at about four and a half to five inches of up travel on this thing. Yeah, shooting for four inches front and back, end up a little bit more, I think. So it's got the WFO 2500 HD frame plates. You built the towers off of that. Um, you did not do a radius arm, did you? No, this is the first time I have ever done a three link. Yeah. So. so there's a couple other weird things. We'll lean into that. So first off, three link, not a radius arm, right? Yep. So right here, lower control arm mount Frenched in. This is basically our WFO inside the frame upper link mount that Brian uh, Frenched into the frame, two inch quarter wall links, custom bend here. And then right behind my, my hand here, the frame has been notched out for the upper link to clear. That was a lot of work, Brian. Yeah, it took a little while. And then I see you had to reroute the exhaust. And reason being is, take a look at this. There's a three link mount right towards the center of the axle, comes across and all the way to right above the lower link here. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. So basically, Brian, uh, your upper link and your lower link are the same length almost, huh? Yeah, they're real close. Real close to the same length. And the, the spread looks pretty close on both of them too. So in a sense, you built a parallel four link or sorry, a parallel three link. So what that means is when your suspension cycles, you don't get a lot of pinion change, do you? Nope, not much. Hardly any pin, yep. and that is the downfall of a radius arm, yeah. is the pinion keeps rocking up as it cycles. Uh, I'm looking underneath here and I'm running into the next weird thing. So <laughs> take a look at that right there. Brian, that is not a 241 transfer case. No. That looks to me like a 205. Yeah, that's the round pattern 205 from a square body Chevy. Okay, so I'm starting to look at this pile of parts. Six liter truck engine that wasn't automatic. You converted it to a stick with just a factory flywheel, right? Yep. Six speed manual. And then it looks like the six speed is just bolted to the ZF. They're both 32s flying, right? So the the ZF's a 29 spline, so yeah. JR's transmission did a 29 spline uh, input from a Dodge 205. Okay. And then it bolted right up. So, and you did a female 29 spline input, right? Yep. So it slides right over the shaft of the transmission. Correct. And then I'm looking up in here, it looks like there's about an inch and a half billet spacer. Yep, that's to get to the links to work out perfect. And that also allows the shift rods to go in, right? Yeah, for the twin sticks to clear. And it. I'm looking right up in here. 1350 front CV, and the angle is absolutely, it's not steep at all. Yeah. So you basically accomplished a flat belly pan, uh, no driveline angle with a 205, I mean, all bulletproof stuff. And this leads me to what this front axle is because I'm looking, the driveline is on the passenger side. Yeah, I know you guys always go with the, the 05 and up fronts, they're great, but I wanted the, the Chevy that Chevy should have built. So it's all Chevy parts. 
So you are a purist, Brian. Yeah, on this one. I'm looking at just how tight everything is. You know, with exhaust, upper link, lower link, you know, cross member, front drive line. I mean, the drive line to the oil pan. I mean, you have accomplished damn near the impossible. Even the upper three link mount, you know, obviously you set it at full bump. It just misses the oil pan at full bump, right? Yeah, in the oil line for the cooler. And this is what, you know, if you called up and talked to us or when you were a salesman, if somebody called and said, I want to use a Chevy 60 on a 2500 HD, what would you have told them? It's doable. Oh, with, you would have told with, them? With a lot of work. It's not the easy route, that's for sure. Yeah. I would have said, get a Super Duty front. But, yeah, it's easier. So I'm looking, you got our uh, front link mounts and they're center line of the tube, so nothing hanging down. Yep. Um, that's my theme here. Like I said, passenger side drop, Chevy Dana 60. Once again, notch on the frame, exhaust coming next to the 205. So this thing just fits in here tight. And I'm looking, you got our uh, three inch track bar mount. So it's right off the bottom of the frame, yep. right? Um, and the flat pitman arm. So, I mean, super cool. The, with the low pinion diff, usually you have a really steep front drive line. And with the length of the six speed of the 205, this drive line is damn near flat. Yep. This is just awesome. Well, let's go around to the front. So. Looks to me like you have a HD steering box, but this is the brand new PSC big bore box, yep. right? Yes, I got the box and the ram and hose and everything from you. Yep, so PSC steering, flat forged pitman arm, which is basically the three inch kit pitman arm, three inch kit track bar bracket, and then morphing it to the GM stuff. So I see your drag link coming across and you're running an inv inverted T style steering, huh, Brian? Yep. So uh, inch and a half, 250 wall DOM. Um, and how, how does it drive with all this setup? Good. Looks like it's got plenty of caster. So what was the hardest thing about making this package fit, Brian? All of it to get, all, getting all of it to fit. Everything was hard. Yeah. yeah. I see your track bar is a combination of a plate welded to the axle tube for a double shear, but it also has a plate that basically sits into the leaf spring perch yeah. and bolts down with the bolts as well and is welded, right? Yep, and it's welded to the passenger tube. So that is, you know, when people say, hey, I want to use a Chevy 60 and do a three link or a four link on it, the track bar mount is always the hardest thing to accomplish, yeah, right? Exactly. And it looks like you accomplished a super low profile one. I mean, I see it just missing the oil pan. It's bent right in front of the diff cover. PSC Hydro Assist, right? Yeah. And it, it just tucks up nice and flat, nothing hanging down. Um, one of the benefits of using this Kingpin 60 and not having a truss or anything is your lower shock eye is probably about, what, three and a half inches yeah, lower, lower yep. than the Super Duty one. And so that allows you to have more travel out of the shock, lower ride height, you know, and accomplish what you're doing. Like, we haven't even talked about the fact that, what size tires are these? 40s. So 40s on black steel wheels, um, ride maybe three to four inches of lift, I'm thinking, off a of factory. Um, so as I get up here, there's one more thing that our viewers may not be noticing, and I didn't notice it until, I'm telling you what, a little... I'm guessing we'll there's a guy out that. there that probably will notice. But. A lot of GM guys. So come up here and tell us what you got going. All right. So basically it, the Silverado cat eye front end, some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, and the cat eye is meaning this angle, exactly, right? Exactly. The slant headlight. Because it looks like a cat. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't like the, the Silverado bumper. So I took a Sierra bumper off of 25 HD. Meaning a GMC bumper. Exactly. Yeah. And so modifications. this bumper would normally be down about four inches, right? Yeah, exactly. And then there's like a beauty strip. A, a filler piece, yeah. I don't want any of that. I want it tucked up, so. This and the same do. thing, the Chevy front end looks so tall and wide, right? Yeah. So you basically just compress your grill bumper package. Yep. And put the GMC bumper on the Chevy. And uh, as you can see, see the frame rail sticking out right here? That frame rail would normally be behind this part of the bumper. If you wouldn't have told me what you what you did, I wouldn't have noticed. But it kind of just goes with the overall just clean, badass look of this truck. And 17-inch black steel wheels and, and Toyo 40s, like, you've been wheeling for 15, 20 years with us. You've had 10 rigs. You've been on Fordyce Rubicon. 
uh, we do have to admit that you haven't been on the trail with this yet, right? A couple snow runs is all, a one recovery snow run. And, and, and it will go on the trail. You just got to get the rock sliders done. Yeah, sliders for bumper. Yeah, maybe a winch or something. Yeah, it'd be cool um, if I can get it behind that bumper. But tell us about your, your choice of the tires and black steel wheels, because the one thing is this Frankenstein truck, you really horse traded for all the parts, right? Yep, that's pretty much the only thing I had to buy out of pocket was just the Toyos and the, the Steelys. And you chose no beadlocks. Why is that? I, I want to drive it on the street everywhere, not have to worry. Yep, you know? no bolts coming loose. And exactly. you do wheel it still. You've wheeled your, your yeah. you wheeled your blazer for years without it. Yep. Have you ever popped a bead going down to 10 pounds? Not one. With the 17 by nine, four and a half steely. No, I'm, I, 10, 10 PSI on the front, eight PSI on the back when it's in the snow, no issues. See, a lot of people think they have to have beadlocks. And this is a good example of when you're building on a budget, building a badass rig, spend the money where it needs to be spent. Like the PSC steering box and the hydro assist. Yep. And for you, a manual transmission, right? Yeah. I mean, all of your trucks have always had manual transmissions. Yeah. So Brian is the manual guy. He even owned a manual Duramax. Yeah. And I drove Maybe. it. I couldn't drive it, could I? No, it's not. It's a hard one. To They're not for everybody. Yeah. No, nope. they jerk around and pop a little bit. But you know what? This truck, uh, you know, all the cool, quirky things, using the 205 transfer case, doing the passenger drop, doing the three link, as low as it is to the ground, full smooth belly with nothing hanging down. I mean, you could you could put a 316th belly pan and have everything tucked in, you know? Um, as far as lights on the dash, you just didn't hook the ABS back up, but everything yeah. else works factory, right? Yeah. Um, you know, people may not realize this can be done. And where did you build this? Um, my garage and my buddy's uh, shop bay. He let me use his lift for doing cut out all the IFS and putting the axle in. So it, it just shows that if people have the dreams and, and the wherewithal and a phone with marketplace right. and uh, call up WFO and get a bunch of uh, key parts, um, they could make their dream truck. And I will tell you, Brian, after riding in this thing and seeing it in person, because I know you've been building it for a long time, sending me pictures, it is by far on my top 10 list of Chevy solid axle full-size trucks if not in the top five Shoot, I, appreciate um, it. I haven't even driven That's on the highway feet, yeah i haven't even driven on the highway in it yet but just driving through there after you picked me up feeling it hit the bumps feeling how quiet it is how smooth it is the comfort inside you know i hope a lot of people can uh take some lessons from brian and uh build more of these american full-size beauties yeah i i just love having a spot that has builder parts you know because obviously it's nice, the kits are nice for a lot of people these days for the trucks, but like a lot of people, you know, they're out there. Some people still want to just build stuff and build their own thing, but having the access to the, you know, the link mounts, frame plates, you know, all the stuff that you're going to need, the brake line components and just having it here local. I mean, it's, it's essential, well, you know. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving us a little uh, spot there, but really the real deal is about you and showing that there's people out there that can make this and build this. And if you have dreams to do something, go for it. So I hope you enjoyed this 12 Rigs of Christmas. And don't forget 12% off on the website for these builder parts till the end of the year. See ya. Control.